in this video we focus on another problem which is the impact of Doppler effect and we will focus to understand one example which is the coherent and non-coherent PSK communication so once again we are focusing on the Doppler effect the change in frequency over or its impact on coherent and non-coherent PSK communication if you look at the discrete model the received signal is made of uh, the impact of the channel on the data plus noise where because we are using PSK this phase contains the data shown in green here and of course our channel is referred to as ZK so the channel will scale the received signal and this could this is in general a complex number so we have a magnitude and phase which affect the data set so there are two ways to deal with PSK in digital communication one is coherent and one is non-coherent for the coherent scenario the bits are modulated and the modulation ref is reflected on the phase so this theta could be plus or minus or a given value according to the bits being 0 or 1 for example the data will go through the channel it will be scaled by zk this is a fading factor it could be complex number in general and noise will be added so what we do at the receiver we try to estimate the channel if we can accurately estimate z the impact to the channel then we can scale back and we cancel the effect of the channel so we need to estimate the channel the received signal is from the received signal we need to find the estimate of theta which is the, the, the argument that maximizes the probability that this is the received signal given the given theta and given the our estimate of the channel for the case of non-coherent mode communication we need to use differential PSK so the bits again will be modulated in the phase and what we do we compare the phase with the previous one and then we transmit the data okay that's differential frequency shift keying uh, differential phase shift keying different uh, dpsk and then it go again through the channel the channel will have zk and there's going to be noise what we do at the receiver also we use we have a memory where we store the previous data and we use we use this to demodulate so although it's non-coherent because there is and we assume that we don't know the channel uh, but we use differential encoding and then we do the decoding at the other side so what happens at the receiver side we're going to multiply the received signal with the one before so rk times rk minus one assuming we got the conjugate so to cancel the effect of the phase and then of course what we get is the following so we have the data is in the difference so once we scale the received signals with the previously stored one we get scaling in the amplitude and scale in, in the phase so this scale in the phase result in a difference we call this phi k now we have different scenarios either we have uh, the channel is the same between the two symbols did not change so we get a real real number because we know z we know that k minus one is just the same when you scale by conjugate you get just a real number the second scenario where the channel is slowly changing so there will be some difference this is almost a real number and in the last case if you have fast fading so that would be a problem although we are using differential but things change so if we have fast fading fast varying channel this is going to be in general complex the performance uh, for the bit error rate for dbsk without going into the derivation is given by the following formula where gamma b is the energy per bit and rho c depends on how fast the channel change so it depends on the autocorrelation at t at the end of the period compared with the autocorrelation at zero so this is small for fast varying channel and it's one for constant channel so if you want the performance for a non-changing channel you have one here this is going to cancel out you get back into what you want and alternatively if you have if you know the exact frequency of the double frequency depending on the speed of the car the speed of the object or vehicle we can find fd so we can substitute here fd and using the pistol function or what have you we get uh, the rho c we get the value and we substitute so this allows us to find the performance of binary phase shift keying coherent and non-coherent the coherent and uh, non-coherent in the case of uh, sorry, the coherent case in the case of uh, presence of, of frequency effect we're not showing the derivation here though we are, we're just getting the idea about how things being done and the following curve shows you the impact at different cases so we're trying different value of the double frequency which is equal to v over lambda 
Now, compared with the symbol frequency, compared with the data rate, so what matters is the, the, the difference between the frequency change and the data rate. So we're, we're, we're looking at four different scenarios here where, where the doubler is zero. So we get back to our, uh, our uh, Rayleigh fading performance, which is linear here. And once you have more fading, the performance become even worse and worse and worse. We get what we call the error floor. Error floor means that there is a certain floor that you cannot go below because you reach the floor. And now this will improve our understanding of the impact of fading. Once we lose the frequency, so fast fading channels are a problem. So a doubler spread causes irreducible error floor. Irreducible, you cannot reduce it. It's just a floor for modulation technique using different detection, differential detection because differential is now not good anymore, the difference, because things are changing. In differential modulation, the signal phase associated with one symbol is used as a phase reference for the next symbol, as we have done in the previous slide. In the phase, in the channel, uh, if the phase of the channel or of the channel phase decorrelates changes over symbol, then the phase reference becomes extremely noisy, and that would lead to very high symbol error rate that is independent of the signal power even if you increase the signal power, uh, because we get the signal correct. We're using it to decode the next signal, but the next signal has, uh, the channel has changed dramatically. So that explains why we have error floor. Now let's conclude with the following example. It says channel one, we have binary phase shift keying signaling over a channel with signal to noise ratio 10 dB for 50% of the time and zero dB for 50% of the time. So this is the first time we deal with this. We have two different states. We have 10 dB, and then after 10 seconds, it changes, changes. So the receiver feeds back the channel state every 10 symbols, okay? So we have channel one, binary phase shift keying signal over a channel with 10 dB, right? For 50% of the time, and then we go into zero dB for another 50% of the time. The receiver feeds back the channel state every 10 symbols. So what do we need to do? We need to draw a scattering plot, okay, that shows all, more or less uh, to scale in both conditions. We'd like to look at, we'd like to look at what is uh, the bit error rate for both, for both conditions and average bit error probability. And we'd like to see how do we improve uh, the bit error rate. So let's see how we deal this, with this problem. If we assume that the noise variance is fixed, then the scatter plot should look like roughly the same here. For example, we are sending binary phase shift keying or PVSK. In the case of low signal to noise ratio, the, the circles are close to each other, while in the case of high signal to noise ratio, the circles would be away from each other. For channel one, which has a bit error rate of 10 dB, the probative error is 10 minus five. That's channel one. For channel and zero dB, uh, we get around 10 raised to the power minus one. How did we get this? We're going back to the to the curves for the probability of error. All right, and we have the binary uh, identified Gaussian noise case. I will look at um, the given signal to noise ratio. So we're given in the question that we have zero dB. So draw a line, get the probability of error, and then also uh, for the case of 10 dB, I draw a line and get the probative error, which is 10 raised to the power minus five. So you can see that uh, from, the, from the plot. If you scale 0.5% of the time, we have this probative error, 0.5 times this probative error, we find out that approximately, approximately, we have 0.05 error, which means that this is dominating the error. Okay, so when we, have, when we are in this scenario, we have almost no error. And in the, when we are in this scenario, we get uh, almost uh, no error. Uh, this is no error, and this is we have a 0.05% of the uh, 0.05 uh, out of 100 or percent uh, 0.05 probability of error. So the bad channel dominates the good channel. This can be improved, this can be ex uh, exploited by sending more data when we are in this time, and then, of course, for example, we can use 16 QAM. And then, of course, when we are in the bad channel, we can send less data. 
or no data. So it depends on what is what optimize the scenario. So we can send more data when we are here, and for the remaining part of the time, we should send less data. That will improve the performance. Okay, so I think with this we got an idea about uh, having fast fading when when the channel goes to bad and then good conditions. Uh, in coming videos, we'll find when I'm, in, our, in our next objective, we'll try to use this understanding of the performance in wireless channels, whether there is fast or slow fading, to find solutions, including diversity and other techniques to improve the performance of wireless channels, wireless communications, wireless communication over fading channels. Thank you.